In this video, we're going to talk about secrets management with HashiCorp Vault. Vault is a open source secrets management platform used for storing and managing your secrets. This includes credentials, access tokens, certificates, encryption keys, or anything that you deem secret. When we say secrets manager, platforms like 1Password and LastPass come to mind. These platforms allow people to access secrets, but Vault doesn't really play in this space. Vault is primarily used to secure application workloads such as authentication between APIs and where no humans are involved. The general philosophy behind secrets management is, the less people who have access to the secret, the more secret the secret is. Common sense. But in practice, this is easier said than done. Imagine if you had an application that needs to be accessed by six other applications. In the olden days, you would need to distribute the secrets to those six application teams but it only takes one member of one team to accidentally misplace or misuse the key to cause a breach. HashiCorp Vault solves this problem by providing solutions that don't require secrets to be distributed. Instead, it uses the identity of an application to determine what secret it has access to. This means that access to secrets can be centrally managed and easily revoked when no longer required or if something fishy is going on. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to set up Vault. Then I'm going to go through the most generic way of getting a secret using what's known as app role. And then we'll talk about something a little bit more slick, which is getting secrets with Kubernetes service accounts. Finally, we'll talk about my favorite feature of Vault, which is its encryption services. For this installation of Vault, we're going to set up Vault in Kubernetes, which is a very common deployment option. We're going to start by running kubectl cluster info to verify that our cluster is up and running. Then we're going to add HashiCorp Vault to our Helm repo by running Helm repo add HashiCorp and the Helm chart location URL. Then we're going to update the repo by running Helm repo update. Finally, we're going to verify that HashiCorp Vault has been added by running Helm search repo HashiCorp slash Vault. Now we're going to install the Vault Helm charts. To do this, first create a namespace by running kubectl create namespace Vault or you can do this with a deployment YAML file. Next, create a file called helm vault raft values.yaml. This file specifies some of the custom configuration options we want for our vault deployments. The affinity field specifies the pod affinity rules for vault pods, which are used to control the scheduling of vault instances across Kubernetes nodes, but we won't be using this option. We will, however, enable HA for our vault deployment, which is high availability because it's important for secret management platforms to always be available to applications. For the backend, we will enable Raft to persist vault data like our secrets. We will enable the UI and expose it using a Kubernetes node port so we can access the UI from outside of the cluster. And finally, we will enable the injector which provides a nifty way of injecting vault secrets into pods, which I'll talk about later. Going back to our terminal, we are now ready to install the vault helm charts by running helm install vault hashicorp slash vault, we will specify the values option and pass to it the values we just created. We will also specify the vault namespace, which we also just created, where the helm charts will be deployed. You can now see that the status of the helm chart is deployed. But if you go and run kubectl get pods, you'll see that the vault pods are running, but none of the containers are up. This is because vault has not yet been initialized and is still in a locked or sealed state. To get our pods initialized and unsealed, first we will set our Kubernetes cluster to the vault namespace to make our lives a little bit easier. Then we will run this command to initialize the first pod, which is vault zero. This will also generate a key to unseal vault and a root token, which we will later use to access vault. These secret artifacts are stored in the cluster key JSON file. To unseal vault, we will use the unseal keys stored in the file which you can find by running this command. We will store the value as an environmental variable called vault unseal key, which we will later use for unsealing vault. Now that we have the key, we can unseal our first vault pod, which is vault0, by using this command and passing in the unseal key. Now that we've unsealed our first vault pod, we will join the other two vault pods to the raft cluster. Recall that the raft cluster is what we will use for the backend for persisting data for things like secrets. We will start by adding vault1, then we'll add vault2. So now when we run kubectl get pods, you can see that only vault0 containers are up. 
This is because we have initialized an unseal volt zero, but we haven't done the same for volts one and two pods. So to unseal them, we will run this command for volts one, then we'll do the same for volts two. Now when we run kubectl get pods, you can see that all containers are now up and running. That finalizes the installation. To access the Vault UI, I'm going to port forward Vault 0 to my local desktop on port 8200 by running this command. Hopping over to my browser, you can access the UI on localhost colon 8200. To log in, go back to the cluster key.json file that we generated earlier to grab the root token and use this to sign in. If this works, you've successfully installed Vault. Okay, now let's talk about retrieving secrets from Vault using the most generic method known as app role. But before we do anything, let's first go create some secrets and policies within Vault. Jumping into our terminal, we will access a Vault pod by running kubectl exec command and specify a name of a Vault pod, in this case Vault0, as well as the shell that we want. Then we're going to log into Vault. It asks for the token, so we're going to go back to the cluster keys JSON file and get the root token. Copying and pasting this token in, you'll see that we're now logged into Vault and we're ready to run Vault commands. Now we're ready to create our first secrets. To do this, first enable the secrets engine by running Vault Secrets Enable with a path of secrets and the secret engine kvv2, which is the best way of storing key value secrets like usernames and passwords. Next, we'll create a secret by running Vault kv put secret slash hello world and enter the username cybersnips and the password shyboy123. To double check whether this was successful, we can run vault kv get secret slash hello world and you can see that the secret has been created. Next, we'll create a secret file which allows the reading of anything with the path of secrets. Note that in production, you must follow the principle of least privilege. We will then write this policy with vault's policy writes, the name of the policy which we will call app and the path to the app policy that we just created. Now that we have a secret and a policy, we'll create a auth method known as app role so that we can actually go and retrieve the secrets. The first step is to enable app role with vault auth enable app role. We will then create an app role called app and tell it to use the app policy that we just created. To do this, punch in vault write auth slash app role slash role slash app and policies equal to app. In order to use this role, we will get the role ID by running vault read auth slash app role slash role slash app slash role ID. Once the role ID prints, save it because we'll be using it later to retrieve secrets. To get the corresponding secret for the role, run vault write the option F auth slash app role slash role slash app slash secret ID. Note that in production, you'll want to set the secret ID TTL to expire in a sensible defined period of time. Jumping back to the UI, you can see that the secrets engine is created and within it, you have the hello world credentials. In access, you can see that the app role has been enabled and in policies, you can see the policy app has been created. Okay, now imagine you have an application that needs to retrieve the hello world credentials. We only need a small bit of code to allow the application to retrieve these credentials. We will retrieve the credentials using Python, but you can use any language where Vault SDKs are available. Next, we will install the Vault SDK with pip3 install hvac. Okay, now let's write the code. The first thing that you need to do is import the Vault SDK with import hvac. Next, initialize the Vault client by passing it the Vault URL. Next, we will use the SDK to log in using the app role auth type where we will specify the role ID and secret ID that we got from the previous step. Then we will store the token in client token, which will be returned to us once we authenticate in the previous step. To do this, you will need to parse it out of the response dictionary. Now that we have our token, we can exchange the token for the hello world secret, which we're authorized to read based on the vault policy that we previously created. To retrieve the secret, we will pass the token to the Vault client. We will then retrieve the secret from the KV secrets engine specifying the mount point, which is secrets, and the path of hello world. This will return the secret in the response. We will then save the secret data in a variable and then print it out to console. But in a real world scenario, you would simply return the secret to the application to be used against another application for things like authentication. 
We'll now run the application and you can see that the secrets have been retrieved from Vault. Okay, now let's talk about a more innovative way of retrieving secrets. Vault provides the Kubernetes Auth type, which allows your application running in Kubernetes to get secrets from Vault without the static credentials that we saw with the app role auth type. Instead, Vault uses the Kubernetes service account token to authenticate against Vault, which is verified against the Kubernetes API server. To do this, Vault injects a sidecar to every pod deployment. This is set by annotations in the application's deployment manifest. The sidecar will mount the secrets to the application container and will even keep it updated when secrets or policies are changed within Vault. Every Kubernetes pod will have a service account. We can find it by first accessing any Kubernetes pod, then navigate to var slash run slash secret slash kubernetes.io slash service account and the service account token will be stored within the token file. This is the token that is used to authenticate against vaults to retrieve secrets. For prerequisites, you will need to first have the injector enabled within the Helm values file when installing vaults. Without this, the sidecar won't be injected even if you have the right annotations in your deployment manifest. Okay, now we will enable the Kubernetes auth type. To do this, log into any pod with kubectl exec it the name of the pod and the shell that you want to use. And then just punch in vault auth enable Kubernetes. We will then set up the configuration for this auth type by running vault write auth slash Kubernetes slash config and pass to it the token reviewer JWT, which is the service account token we saw previously. We will also pass to it the Kubernetes host, which is the API server used to validate the service account token. This is given by the environmental variable Kubernetes port 443 TCP ADDR, which is a default environmental variable available in every pod deployed in Kubernetes. Finally, we will also pass to it the Kubernetes CA cert, so Vault can establish a secure TLS connection with Kubernetes API server. Now let's create a role called my app. To configure this role, we will tell it to use the Kubernetes service account called app, which we will later create in our Kubernetes deployment manifest. We will also bind it to the Kubernetes namespace demo, which we will also create later. Then we will attach the policy app, which we created in the previous section where we discussed app role. Finally, we will set the TTL to one hour for the token that is returned by Vault for accessing secrets. And that's all there is for setting up Kubernetes auth type on Vault. The rest of the configuration will be in Kubernetes deployment files, which we'll talk about next. We're going to start by creating a very simple web app. I'm using the Python Flask framework to achieve this. This application will return a vault managed username and password that is stored in the my secret and my username environmental variables. But where do these environmental variables come from? This is where the magic happens. Vault will inject these secrets into the container and with a bit of massaging in our Kubernetes deployment manifest, we will store them as environmental variables. Then we'll just return them to the browser. In order to run this app in Kubernetes, we need to containerize it. This is just a very generic Docker file which is being exposed on port 8000. After we've containerized our application, it's time to deploy it into Kubernetes. This is the Kubernetes manifest file with a few things to note. First of all, we are naming the deployment app and we will deploy it into a namespace called demo. This big section over here with annotations is where the magic happens for Vault. We will first set the agent inject as true, so a Vault sidecar container will be injected. We will use the role my app, which if you recall, we set up previously. We will then specify the secret to inject, which is our hello world secrets. And finally, we will specify the templates for how we want to inject the secrets. Recall that we wanted to inject these secrets as environmental variables. But in order to do this, we have to create a mini bash script, which is a bit of a hack to inject secrets as we would need to tell Kubernetes to run it during deployment before starting our Python app. Next, we will tell Kubernetes which Docker image to pull, which in my case is the application I've just containerized and stored in my Docker registry. Importantly, we will also tell Kubernetes to execute the shell commands that has been injected by Vault to create the environmental variables before running our Python app, which depends on them. Finally, we'll create a service account called app, which if you recall, is bound to the role that we just created in Vault. We will also specify the service account for our pod spec so that our pods can authenticate with Vault. Now, before we apply this deployment manifest, let's first create the namespace demo. We will also just set the context to demo to make our lives a little bit easier later. 
Now we're ready for deployment. Deploy the Kubernetes manifest by running kubectl apply with the option F and the name of the deployment manifest. Now if we run kubectl get pods, you'll find that there are two containers running in the pod. This is because Kubernetes has injected the vault sidecar automatically as specified in our deployment annotation. To check if it worked, we will port forward the app so we can access it on our local desktop. To do this, run kubectl port forward the name of the pod and the port to expose it on. Jump into our browser, you can see that we have successfully injected the secrets as environmental variables for our app to use. This is very powerful because an application can be completely unaware of Vault and still be able to retrieve secrets. This means that an application doesn't require any custom code like we did with the app role org type in the previous section. To see what's happening in the background, we will log into the pod that we just deployed. The secrets are mounted by Vault at the mount point, Vault. If we go into this, we will find the hello world secrets. And if we cap this file, you can see that the template we had previously defined in the annotations of the Kubernetes deployment manifest worked. Not only have the secrets been injected, we also have a mini bash script to turn the secrets into environmental variables, which Kubernetes will run as we have defined in the deployment manifest. Besides being a secrets manager, Vault can also be used for application level encryption. Let's say you have extremely sensitive data that you need to store in a database and you can't risk anyone such as database admins seeing that data. You can encrypt that data first with vaults before storing it in the database. If another application needs to access it, it can get permissions to the key in vaults to decrypt the data once it retrieves it from the database. To encrypt data with vaults, we will use the Vault Transit Secrets Engine. To enable this, log into a Vault pod with kubectl exec it, the name of the Vault pod, the name of the namespace it's deployed in, and the shell you want. Next, simply run Vault Secrets Enable Transit. To create an encryption key, run Vault Write F Transit slash Key slash My Key, which will create an encryption key called My Key. This is a AES-256 symmetric encryption key that we will later use to encrypt and decrypt data. Jumping onto the UI, we will also quickly modify a policy that we have previously created and is attached to an app role that we also previously created. This way, the app role has permissions to use the key to encrypt and decrypt with the key called My Key. Now we're ready to use the encryption services. Make sure you have installed the HVAC SDK from HashiCorp. Import it into your code, then import base64. Next, we'll initialize the HashiCorp Vault client by passing it the location of Vault. Note that we are currently already port forwarding to Vault, so we will be able to access Vault on our local desktop. Next, we will log into Vault. To do this, we need to get the raw ID and secret ID. Log into any Vault pod and run Vault read auth slash app role slash role slash app slash raw ID, where our role is called app. To get the secret, run Vault write f auth slash app role slash role slash app slash secret ID. Copy both values. We will use the raw ID and the secret ID to authenticate to Vault. Then we will parse the response to get the client token, which is the token we use to gain access to the Vault encryption key. After this, we will pass the token to the Vault client and we're ready to encrypt. For this exercise, we just want to encrypt the text My Secret Data. First, we have to convert it to Base64. Then we have to specify the Vault key to encrypt with and the data type that we're passing it. Then we use the Vault SDK to encrypt the data. Finally, we'll just print the results to console. Now let's just run the app. You can see that I've got a few typos in my code, so let's just go quickly fix them. Now when we run the script again, you can see that we were able to successfully encrypt the data with the Vault key. Now to decrypt, let's create a file called decrypt. Copy and paste the first bit of code in our encrypt file to initialize the Vault client. Adding the encrypted text or the ciphered text that we got from the previous step, specify the key that we want to use to decrypt, then use the Vault SDK to decrypt. Then convert the text back to plain text and print into console. Now if we run the script, you can see that we have successfully decrypted the encrypted text using Vault. That's it guys, thank you so much for watching the video. Make sure to like and subscribe for more content.